Coach Michael Don and Peter, first off, how are you holding up? I'm doing I'm I'm good. Just just grinding, just trying to get our guys kind of back on track after after Sunday. Is this talent a one in seven talent or is it better than this? I think it's hard to say if I'm going off of talent that we started with. We've had some guys kind of rotate through and you know, I mean Three games, we don't have our starting quarterback. It's just we, we, we're kind of been mi mixing and matching kind of some of the guys that are playing together. But you, you beat Dallas, and that seemed like it was the jumping off point because you're absolutely right. You had a quarterback with Mono. You lost the biggest free agent signing on defense in Mosley, and, and, and it crippled you defensively. But it seemed like everything clicked against Dallas. Since then, three consecutive losses. So... What went wrong? Where's the disconnect between what we saw in the first half against Dallas and what's happened since? Well, I think New England, we we just we just got smoked there. They just they beat us, and Jacksonville, we just Jacksonville and Miami, we didn't do enough. All three phases, we just not playing complimentary football. We're just not doing enough to to put ourselves in position to win in the fourth quarter. Adam, are you and your staff being out coached in these games? I mean, as for somebody else to judge, I, I know we're we're trying to put our guys in the best position possible, you know, week in and week out. I mean, it's I mean, you guys can can discuss that part of it, but I mean, I know what I'm watching on tape. I know what's what's happening during the game. It's just hasn't worked out the way we needed it to. Are you, I know you try to hold out outside noise, and and for the most part, I I, I believe that you do do that, but. Do you understand that Jet fans are furious right now and many of them are calling for your head, saying that you're doing a bad job? Yeah, I mean, all I can say is, you know, we're working to get this, things better, this thing better, trying to get our guys to, to play well together. And, you know, I promise you nobody's more angry than I am. So I know nobody cares, but, you know, it is what it is. What was the most frustrating thing in particular on Sunday about the way the team played? Well, I mean, we just we didn't we didn't play well as a group. I mean, it's just it's not one guy, it's not one thing. It's you know we have two kind of two areas of the, of the parts of the game where we play complementary football, and you know we need that more consistently. I know that's something that we're constantly stressing and and. Guys understand it. We we know we can do it. We just we just got to put it together. Now it comes together on those first series. You saw it against Jacksonville. You score on your first possession. You scored on your first possession against Miami. You had a great second possession that stalled on the, the missed field goal. Why is it clicking early and then just not clicking as the game goes on? Penalties. We're hurting ourselves. You know we have an explosive play. We get an illegal hands to the face, and we have an OPI. Those are going to kill your drives every time. Is Sam taking steps back? No. He's he's doing a good job as far as the last two games. He's done well getting to the right place, eyes going to the right place, where he's kind of got his body alignment, decision making. We just got to eliminate the couple couple decisions that are causing turnovers. And he's aware of it. He knows it. That's something that he's working on. He knows that it's it's coming along for him, and and he's. He's close to really clicking in, the, in this thing, and I feel like he's, he took a better control of the offense at the line of scrimmage last game. That was really good to see for us with kind of how he was directing traffic. We just got to keep it clean for four quarters and, and make sure that we make the right decision when, you know, when we have the ball in our hand. Adam, you've always been forthright with us, so I'm going to be forthright with you. The thing that jumped out at me about Sunday's game after the game when you said you weren't embarrassed by that, I mean, you lost to a team that's not even trying to win. How's that not embarrassing to you and the organization? Well, I know this. When you're, when you're in the arena and you're competing mm -hmm. and these guys are putting everything they have into this preparation-wise and laying it on the line, you can't be embarrassed about anything. You have to... You have to go to work. You have to try to make things better. You have to do everything you can to put ourselves in position to win the game, and then we have to go go do it, and we haven't done that yet. But did this sting you more? Because this is the team that let you go, and, and then you lose to them. That was their first win. Yeah, I mean, it's really irrelevant how I felt about it, so uh, my job's got to be move on to the next one. All right, so as you move on, though, I, I guess the thing that frustrates the fans and, and even my, myself you know, covering the team is, 
all three phases. You, you've said that the last few weeks. It, does it does it at some point have to get better, right? I mean, you want to see the team grow. You say your quarterback is not regressing, but it, it, at least from a statistical standpoint, wins losses. It seems to get worse and worse as each week goes on. Maybe not to you, the expert, but from to the from us, the naked eye, it just doesn't look like the quarterback is moving forward. Don't you have the talent and the ability and the staff, quite frankly, that this should be a team getting better at this stage of the season rather than getting worse? Yeah, well, everybody's looking at the result. We're not winning. So nobody's going to look at the fine details of everything. We are. That's what our job is to do. That's what we're, we're always looking at. We're trying to, to put ourselves in good position. And the things that we're messing up right now offensively is we're turning the ball over. You know, we're having a bad turnover in the red zone, and we can't do that. And the other 39 throws that nobody pays attention to, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in there. We just got to eliminate the bad plays. Any news on the MRI with Le'Veon Bell? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see where he is tomorrow. Like, right now, I know he's not practicing uh, on Wednesday, and we'll just kind of see kind of the rest of the week goes. But I think he's feeling better. We'll just kind of kind of see where it goes from there. And you put the cornerback Tremaine Johnson and the wide, re wide receiver Josh Bellamy on IR. There's a good possibility this could be Tremaine Johnson's last time with the Jets then after being put on the IR and the way the contract stacks up. Yeah, I, I, I haven't really been diving into any contracts. Mm -hmm. So, you know... I mean, I know we're, we put him on IR and him and Josh, and, you know, it's kind of that, that time of the year where some guys, you know, they, they're not going to be back in time, and, you know, we got to get guys up to be able to play. You you left the game. Uh, you had the three timeouts at the end of the game. You didn't use them. You've just said you've since said that that was a mistake. But the question I have to ask you, why did you call a timeout when they, when they were kneeling? Why did you say, uh, decide well, we to use time, one then? We had three timeouts left. And right. we we screwed that up by not not getting Fitzy to the ground right away and him kind of dancing around back there. That was that was not not what we needed. We needed to get him down, and we still had enough time. Maybe we could have got one more play in. Who knows? Um, your quarterback Sam was on yesterday. Talked about communication, like with the safety. You know, there's the lack sometimes of that communication. Is that on the players? Is that on the coaches? When there's a lack of communication, where do you correct that? Well, I wasn't in the huddle, and it's one of those things where not sure what was actually said and what was communicated moving to the line of scrimmage, if anything changed. So, I mean, I've, I've talked to – we've talked to as a group, and, and we just know that that can't happen again. we got to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Sam's such a good guy. We asked him this yesterday about Brian Winters. He said, listen, no problem. We spoke about it afterward. But, I mean, do you tell your guard who's not having the best year of his life – don't you ever try to show up our quarterback on the field in front of cameras and people? I think Brian was just, he was frustrated and upset. And, you know, Brian's, Brian's playing through a lot of little different things and, and trying to do everything he can to help us win. And, you know, it's one of those things where we'd rather not that happen. I know in the heat of the game sometimes there's a lot of things like that that occur that not everybody always sees. That was just happened to be one of those situations that everybody could see. You know, we'd rather not that that go on, you know, but sometimes we got to hash those things out. Is your owner upset at the way the team's played? Have you spoken with Christopher Johnson? Yeah, I, I talk to him every day. And what, is, what does he say about a loss like Sunday? He, he shares the same vision that really Joe and myself and, and, and Jaime have kind of put together, and we're, he knows that we're working to get things corrected, and we're putting everything we can in to, to try to get a win one week at a time. And we got to do a good job this week and, and get ready for this game and, and make sure that when we go out there, we're ready to go and, and we, we perform better than we did last week. It is, I mean, he seems like a very even keel guy, but is he upset? Is he angry at the way the team is, one and seven? I, you'd have to ask him that. He's, I've never seen him angry, angry yet. So mm -hmm. I don't know. That's something you'd have to ask him. Um, Coach, I know this is a, a challenging time, and even having to do these interviews is probably not the best of uh, things to do at this moment. But you've done a great job keeping your cool moving forward. But personally, in terms of challenges you've had in football, this game that is your life, where does this current circumstance rank among the hardest challenges you've had in the game? I don't know. That might be a better question for the end of the year. We'll, we'll kind of see how the next eight weeks play out. We'll see how, you know, how our injury status 
kind of goes through the rest of the rest of the season, and we'll see how much better we can get. I mean, you know, I just feel like we're we're close to turning the corner, especially on offense. It's just we just have to protect the football. We can't put our defense in bad spots. We can't miss out on red area opportunities. I feel like we just get these red area, you know, turnovers cleaned up. Mm. That, that would help us a lot. Um, I want to circle back to something that I had said before, um, Coach. I didn't get a chance to follow up. When, when I was talking to you and criticizing the team based on the losses, you said that I'm just judging it on wins and losses, that you go deeper into that. And I get that. But are you asking me not to judge it on wins and losses? No, what, what can I judge uh, it that's on? Not, that's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm okay. just saying that's what I – like, I have to look deeper than that. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, trust me, I want to win as much as anybody else. It's just when you don't, you you got to dig deep and, and look at all the things. What's good? What's bad? What do we need to fix? What, what, did, what do we feel like is closer to a finished product than something else? Like, we have to really dive into those type of things. If I just – shrug my shoulders that we lost, like, let's scrap everything, then we're not going to be able to build anything. Now, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but I just want to know your feeling, Coach. Do you, do you feel with, with the fan base so uh, angered right now and inflamed and the fact that the team's 1-7, and seven, do you feel that by the end of the year, if it doesn't get better, that your job could be in jeopardy? That's something I, I don't – it doesn't cross my mind because I, I can't think that way. i got to think getting the guys better. That's what I'm worried about. And you never, even in a quiet moment, think about stuff like that. Boy, this is not going well. No, because I, I have 53 players, probably more than that, really, if you count all the guys that are either on IR or practice squad. I had 26 coaches. I had all these guys counting on me to do my job. So, and I got the front office counting on me. I got ownership counting on me. I got the, our, our staff counting on, count on, on me. I got our front office upstairs counting on me to make sure that I do everything I can to help these guys get better. And if I'm wasting my time on that, then I'm not doing my job. All right, thoughts on the Giants? It's, you know, they're showing some, some good stuff on offense. I know that, watching Saquon, and he's going to be a challenge for us, obviously. You know, Daniels had some, some good, good stuff. You know, he's kind of having, you know, a couple of turnovers, which that happens with the young quarterbacks. The defense, you know, they have a lot of really good plays. Betcher's a hard, hard guy to go against. It has been for me, and you know, over the last four or five years. So, you know, we it's going to be challenging for us. We got to make sure that we're ready to go. You know, we we we've thrown a lot at you. There's a lot to kind of uh, dissect. And as Peter said, I, I know it's difficult. But when you hang up this phone after this interview, what's the what's the first thing you work on? What's the what's the first thing that has to get accomplished as you march forward for this giant game? Well, I'm going to be watching this next cut up. I got pulled up once I get off the phone with you guys. Do I mean, you, we're just we're working on our first and second down game plan. Do you look at this giant game as a big game because of what it means to your fans and it's a home game? I mean, in the NFL, every game is a big game. And anytime you get a chance to play at home, like you, those are the games that you look at as you have to win. And that's what that's kind of how we've approached every game. And we just have to make sure that we do a good job getting ready this week and, and go play well. I guess the reason we do this is because the fans just want to know, you know, what the coach is thinking. Uh, do you have a message for them? What would you tell the Jet fan as they get ready for the second half of the season? We need to play better. We need to play better. We need to coach better. We need to make sure that we have better results on Sunday. Now, final thing. I, I don't think you'll answer this, but I'll ask it anyway. Usually at the halfway point of anything, you give a grade. Give yourself a grade. How have you coached or have you done a good job? I mean, I'm, that's for somebody else to 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 throw a grade on, on things like that. I don't, I don't think that way. You, you don't think, gee, I've done a good job this week or a bad job? You, that doesn't enter your mind? It, no, because it's irrelevant. I don't waste my time wake it, thinking about things that don't matter. Yeah, but you've got to, you've got to judge your, your, the coaches that you work with, whether or not they, they're doing a good job. So, yeah. I mean, you must self-evaluate, we too. We're eight games in. We're eight games in. And we got eight more to go, so we got a, we got a long ways to go. we got a lot of things to get accomplished. All right, Coach, thank you. Good luck this Sunday. Thanks. All right, guys. All right, that's the Adam Gase Report brought to you by...